Today, I had the pleasure of having an amazing chat with Mr. Rob Hoskin. Rob has done TED Talks. He is a world international motivational speaker. You can see Rob over my shoulder if you're watching on Spotify and YouTube. Today is the 12th of September. We recorded it in the middle of Suicide Prevention Month. And I tell you that because Rob is on a, on a journey of helping people in their mental health and how leaders should lead. We share a similar journey in the sense of workplace bullying to the point of suicidal thoughts. Rob took it a lot further. He brings in someone very special into his life that helped make him realize he was in the police force. That wasn't just the toxicity. We don't just talk about the toxicity of the police force and what he endured in his journey there, but also the horrible things that he had to see. He saw a 21 year old commit suicide. He saw him take his last breath and they how they both shared a moment in that moment. On the same day, something else drastically happened. The last shift. That's all I think we need to say there. But, but Rob is, articulates himself so beautifully. I learned so much and I know you all will touch base with him and just be able to take so much away from Rob. He is motivational. He is inspiring. And I know you're going to want to sit back and, and, and really take everything from Rob. So stay tuned, stay here. Please, please go and support the channel and subscribe and follow on wherever you listen to this. It'll be really helpful that we can get more inspiring people just like Rob onto the show. We'll be back in 21 seconds with Rob. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Rob Hoskin, welcome to Leading Our Own Way. How are you doing, brother? I am good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. It's been... Uh, it's been really exciting. I've been really looking forward to uh, having a deeper chat with you uh, on air. Uh, we had a really good chat last time and uh, I knew briefly a little bit about your journey. Um, but we met through one of, I think, my fourth or fifth episode. Uh, big shout out to Karen Lee up in Scotland. Um, we, yeah, we met through Karen and she recommended and shared your journey with me. And I was just, uh, um, I was overwhelmed and I just thought, I have, I've got to meet Rob. Um, so thank you so much for for joining me no thank you so much for having me yes uh, karen mentioned about how great uh, the podcast was and all the stuff that you're doing so she's like you two need to meet and this is going to be great and i'm looking forward to it yeah beautiful i know i know we're, we're going to have a great chat and uh, and so many people will be able to take so much away from you um whether they've got friends themselves going through something that you know kind of mirror or you know can connect to your journey or if, um other themselves you know and, and if not they'll just get a good feel st journey story out of you and um yeah. and i know they'll venture and go and listen to some of the things you've done online which i know they will be able to find and we'll obviously discuss um but yeah um just where whereabouts are you in the world at the moment rob i am in Valencia in spain so originally from belfast Moved around the UK a bit, and now I am in Valencia. So I've been here for, for about a year now, and yeah, loving loving life. But we'll see what happens in the future. I'm always so open to be like, well, who knows where I'll, I'll end up. Well, you in the chat, yes. <laughs> you did say you might possibly look at Melbourne, which I'm excited exactly. for. <laughs> yes, so you never know. Who knows? We could be in person having a coffee soon enough. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> You, you, all my friends who are watching this are going to be like, "Be careful, Rob. He will actually hook his claws into you and become <laughs> your best mate." <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm welcome. I'm welcome to. Cool. Um, so, um, if you could, if somebody's just tuned in now, and you wanted to sum up this episode, this journey, you had to put like a little blurb together. What would be the one line that this journey might? encounter if they if you wanted someone to stick around for the next hour an hour and a half or whatever it may be what would you be saying to them right now 
I would say that it's a journey through my own darkest and deepest of depths of myself and it's a journey where I've went through the good times and bad times but when the bad times have hit they've really really hit bad. It's a journey of resilience of being able to bounce back when times really do seem like there's no way to bounce back from and it's a journey of hope, it's a journey of inspiration, motivation, a journey that people can look at and think you know what I can understand now how I can put some of these skills and some of these tips into my own life and find a life that I love and understand what makes me happy. I think that's probably what sums up my journey to be honest with you in, in a sentence. It's a journey from adversity to happiness. Oh, amazing. What makes you happy now then? It's a good question. It is a good question and I speak about happiness quite a lot but the thing is for me is the idea of being spontaneous and having the freedom in my life. The thing that makes me happy is understanding that I'm unique and that you know I'll look at people on social media and what they're doing in their lives and it doesn't impact me because I think good on them but I know but I because I know my core values and things like that 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 may make someone else happy, but it's not me. It doesn't make me happy. So for me, understanding myself actually makes me really happy. And I think it's very important. Forget about the things we do in our lives. Understanding who you are as a person can make you so happy. And I think that's probably a great place to, to start. It's just mm -hmm. to say that, yeah, I'm happy within. And that makes me happy. Yeah, I couldn't have put it any better than myself, and I, I align with you. And when we connected on the pre-chat, I, I, our stories, stories um, are very similar in the, I, I probably would have considered, been thinking about it, maybe like the first half of our journey was very similar in terms of the workplace aspect, right? The workplace bullying, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there now, but your journey obviously ventured off into a different, very different direction. Um, so, but I do align with you for the majority of our chat uh, until we go into the other part, which will become very, very clear. You, um, so I definitely align with what you've just said in terms of how, because I'm really enjoying the simple things of now. And I think that's true really flex because I'm truly happy with my inside, yeah. uh, but it was a hell of a journey to get to it. Right. Yeah. What would, be your core values then some of I think them. my core so i think i always say like four top core values for me is freedom spontaneity challenge and self-belief you know my mum and dad but my mum especially have always made me believe that you have to have confidence in yourself because there'll be many people out there who'll tell you what you can't do in life that you need to be able to tell yourself what you can do you need to believe in yourself and for me, when I look at my core values, everything that I've done in my life, the things that, the times I put myself out there, the things that I've done and chased, it's all come from a place of confidence where I'm not arrogant, but I believe in myself. I believe that I can do anything that I put my mind to. And that core value really does ring true in everything that I do. Challenge, you know, I, I want to be challenged in life. I want to grow professionally and personally. I always want to be better. I want to be better than yesterday. And that drives me, really, really does drive me. And then, as I said, freedom and spontaneity, very similar in many ways. But I love the idea of you know, my calendar not being fully booked where I'm stuck in an office for nine to five and I can't do anything in that nine to five because that's me there. I love that spontaneity where I'm like, yeah, I could work until 1 a.m., but I've maybe taken three hours for a lunch break and I'll do a little bit of work later. I love that spontaneity, being able to go out for a coffee when I want to and things like that. And, you know, that brings the freedom element too. So, yeah, being able to travel the world when I want to, how I want to, really is important to me. So a couple of those, especially freedom and spontaneity, do not relate to being a police officer. That's one thing for sure. <laughs> that, yeah, absolutely. And... 
it, yeah, you, I, I closed my eyes when you said that because I was trying to manif uh, manifesting and visualizing um, the journey I want to go on with the podcast. And, you know, and I, I visualized myself, well, you know what? I'll book that meeting at 10 because it suits the, the person I want to speak to. But if I yeah. don't want to do it, that's okay too, right? And yeah. like what you just said about the coffee, I just loved the idea of going, taking my laptop and going working in the, cutting all this stuff up and, and yeah. making some artwork and just sitting in the cafe and taking as yeah. long or as little as I want to do that yeah. and uh, I am not there yet but I'm visualizing it and I'm manifesting it and I'm, I'm certainly on the way to making it happen and I can see yeah. it improving each day um, yeah. it might take a few years and I'm aware of that and I'm okay with that but I'm yeah. I know I'm on the on, on the path to doing it if that makes sense Good. Yeah. yeah um it was probably a perfect time there then to come into um how are you what are you doing to lead your own way today then what am I doing to lead my own way? Well, first of all, living each day true to my core values is, is something that is so important that we, we people talk about it until we're blue in the face. But core values and understanding your core values really is integral in our lives. Because when we can do that, we're living an aligned life. Every decision we make, if we can relate it to our core values, then we're going to be happy. We are because <laughs> we're living true to ourselves. And for me, I feel very aligned with, you know, what I do for work is something that I love. I always say I find my ikigai where I love doing it. I can make a difference to people's lives and I can get paid doing it too. So it's a, it's a win, win, win for everybody. And I just, I just love what I do. And that really helps leading your own way in your life. Because when you love what you do when you're passionate about what you do when you feel like you've found your purpose in life you never feel like you work a day in your life and I don't feel like I'm working because I'm, I'm following my passion yes there's some days where I'm like okay this is stressful or whatever but I love it so that is so important for me in my life I can tell because you're always looking fresh yeah <laughs> you can see me early in the morning yeah <laughs> we'll see <laughs> well mate if anyone's watching and wants to go to rub's you know social media all the links will be in the show notes but um his pictures i just i see it i tap him every day mate and it's uh yeah. it's inspiring <laughs> and it's um motivating and uh it keeps me aligned to my um you know even though i feel like i could keep all on to myself it's just nice to see that we have you know i can see that you're doing it every day um okay so what do you tell us if, well if you didn't already know what we do is kind of tell everybody what you're doing now uh professionally physically mentally emotionally and how and, and how you lead your own way in that way and then we kind of travel back to where it may have began paint the picture build up your character and so on um what do, tell everybody what you do professionally now then every day so what i do is i am a motivational speaker so I've had fortune to be able to do a TEDx talk and also fortune to be classified as an international motivational speaker where I travel the world giving talks to businesses and also at like well-being festivals and well-being events talking about how people can find their purpose, find a, an aligned life. And it's, it's something that lights me up every day, whether it's to businesses about how they can create happier, healthier teams or at these well-being festivals. Everything that I do, every talk that I do, I'm so passionate about doing it. And I, I just resonate with my core values, resonate to who I am. And I love helping people. You know, I lead my own way by helping people. No matter what I've done in my life, there's always been that element of service. Yeah. Now, my service now as a motivational speaker is by helping people change their mindset, helping businesses change their mindset in terms of how a, a workplace culture should look, how we should create a thriving culture in the workplace where open communication, vulnerability thrives. All these kind of things lights me up because I love talking about them. I talk about them through my own experiences. So yeah, and that's what I do. And in terms of my mental health, spiritual health and emotional health, I, I look after myself every day by doing something that I love, not just professionally, but I do something every day for my happiness. I don't wait for the weekends. I don't wait for the annual leave. I don't wait for that holiday that we've got booked in a couple of weeks time, whatever. I do something for myself every single day. Now, don't get me wrong, every day might look like a five minute going out for a coffee, a takeaway coffee and going for a walk. It might be a, for half an hour walk. It might be an hour going to a cafe. Might be just listen to music that I love 
whatever, we're listening to a podcast, we can do something for ourselves. And I think we get into this notion in our lives where we think, I can't do something for myself today, I'm working today. But we think that doing something for our mental health or our physical health means a spa day, an all day spa, now like, that's brilliant, yes. But actually doing for you something for yourself, doing something for your happiness every day can look so simple, like a five minutes meditation, like 10 minutes just listen to is that your favorite music. Music has the power to lift moods. And especially when you're listening to music that you love, it brightens your day up. If you love music, thankfully I do love music. So I, I just get so much from it. So it's making sure that I take care of the little things in my life doing something every day, whether it's a small thing or a big thing, I don't hold off happiness for that weekend or whatever. And I think that's really important for all these aspects of leading my own way. And it's something that I would definitely share with the audience. Like you can do this too. It's an easy thing to do. You just have to check in with yourself. Yeah. It, it's small, simple steps. If you're not there already where you are uh, and where I consider myself now, it's just those small, simple steps. I think it's like the new year resolution thing, isn't it? By week three, it's gone. Well, it's because yeah. you've set it too big and too large. The goal's too big. Whereas if you yeah. make small, simple changes, somebody said to me the other day about reading, they really want to read, but they just can't get it. And I said, well, what are you doing? And they explained it. And I said, look, break it down tonight, go home and read three lines. Yeah. And if you can read half a page, read half a page and do that for the next week. And then next week, read one page. I mean, they'll do more than that, but they'll see yes. the little habits. And, and then that's because that's what I did. And I took that advice from Jim Quick. I don't even know who Jim Quick is, uh, yeah, the yeah. limitless guy. I'd love to get him on the podcast, by the way. But yeah, yeah. And before you know it, I'm reading a book a week. And I've yeah. not read a book until I was 38 years old. Well, I mean, yeah. I read in school because, you know, you have to. But yeah. in terms of wanting to do it. And that's what kind of then led to me wanting to know more about the brain and, and neuroscience and stuff like that. But going back to your talk, Rob, I've got a picture right here of you doing um, a TED That's talk. A, and um, longer obviously, hair. I, <laughs> longer hair. I did notice that when I saw when yeah. I was like, oh, the, the long hair's gone. Yeah. Um, but there's a picture that I'm holding up on the screen. This will appear on the screen, by the way, um, after I do the edits. But um, yeah, TED talk, what... I'd love to do a TED Talk. I've, I've had quite a few guests on now. I think you're my fourth or fifth TED Talker, which is I'm so blessed and honoured because that it means I'm doing the right thing by be, yeah. being honoured to have you guys on here. So I'm meeting you guys, the right people yeah. um, who who can share that experience with the world. Um, how did that go for you? What how did what how did that come about? Even going to do that? Yeah, it was probably you know it came very early on in my speaking career, and I was very fortunate that it did come very early because it gave me a lot of credibility early on, which not many speakers get so early. And it came about with me just sharing my story on LinkedIn. And, you know, you connect with the right people on LinkedIn and somebody had saw what I was doing, what I was speaking about. They were running a TEDx event and they saw that the theme met what I was talking about and what they wanted to talk about. And it was a match, so they got in touch and said if I'd be interested. And when someone from TEDx talks to you about if you'd be interested in doing a TEDx talk, then yes, that your light, your eyes light up, and you think yes, please. Yeah. So it came up quite, quite very organically in that way, where it was probably the you know right place at the right time. But yeah. you had to do those things and put on these things on LinkedIn to to make that a reality. Yeah. And it was just, it was a great experience. It was a, such a great experience. I always wanted to do a TEDx talk and I actually wrote it down on a piece of paper back in 2020. Just one piece of paper on one line, do a TEDx talk. And I'm gonna do four that now. years later, yeah, that's it. Four years later, right after three years later it was. And that was me and I did it. And it was, it was a great, it was a great moment. Obviously, whenever you manifest something like that, it's great when it comes to fruition. And just, yeah, I just loved it. I loved being there, loved being on stage. And I always say that being on the stage is my happy place. And being able to do a TEDx talk was just that next level where I felt it was a full circle moment where it validated what I was doing, what I was speaking about, and validated just, I was I was on the right course. I was finding my purpose. Yeah, that's amazing, man. And you're right, that manifestation stuff, 
It so works, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. You just you wire. It's neuroplasticity, really, isn't it? You wire in the brain to think that way, and you 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 tend to walk down that path if you do it. I'm going to take a photo of you and that. I've got the TEDx talk print there, and I've I'm going to use that as motivation and make myself Brilliant. accountable. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be it'll be you anyway. <laughs> um, no, that's beautiful, and I think I think yeah. Yeah, I was losing my track of thought then. Yeah, it's just beautiful. And I think that's amazing. And it's, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. What do the well-being um, festivals or well-being conferences kind of look like to you as well? Yeah, a lot of them, you know, they they focus on how we can create a, a more aligned life. So that looks at this idea of happiness more. And, you know, yeah. I go from a place of unhappiness to happiness. And it's just about opening people's minds up about what what their life could look like. And I always start the talks with asking them to close their eyes. And I say to them, I want you to visualize, and I'll go through different things, but I like, I want you to visualize your ideal relationship with yourself. How do you speak to yourself? How do you view yourself? Hmm. Now I want you to visualize your ideal relationships with people around you, your friendships. How do they make you feel? Do they pick you up when you need picked up? Do they support you? Now I want you to visualize your ideal environment where you live. What's, what do you see? What do you smell? All these things. And then I say, you know, visualize your ideal career. How does it make you feel? Are you living a, a purposeful career? Are you following your passion? Your ideal relationship in, in a romantic sense? How do they make you feel? And I just say then, oh, I want you to visualize this, this ideal life. What are you doing day in and day out? What's your day look like? And I ask them then to open their eyes. And I want them, I always say to them, just remember that because we go and I come to it at the end of the talk. So I do the talk about my, my story and my journey. And then I go back to the end. And I go back to it and I say, so I want you to visualize these things again. Just quickly visualizing the things that you were visualizing there. And I, I learned this this little bit from another motivational speaker called Les Brown. He's in America, older older gentleman now. And he says that, I now want you to visualize that you're on your deathbed. And surrounding you on your deathbed are the ghosts of the unfulfilled potential. They're the ghosts of the dreams that you never acted on. And they're angry they're disappointed, they're frustrated. And they say to you, we came to you because you could have brought us to life. But now we must go to the grave together. So I ask you all today, how many ghosts are going to be surrounding your deathbed when your time comes? And it's a lovely full circle moment where it just gets them thinking about their life. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.